check out my latest find. It has seen better days, much better days, but it is the coolest and I can't wait to put some life back into this thing. See the legs? Now generally speaking, if I had an old piece of furniture like this is, if I were gonna do a cleaning, my first cleaning would just be with a damp cloth with water on it because you never know what kind of finishes you're gonna be able to keep and, and you'll learn more about it that way. But this one is so hammered, I'm gonna go ahead and go directly to my water three parts with a one part vinegar wash just because, whoo, it needs it. It's I don't know how long it's been since it's been clean. My guess is it's just been sitting in a garage and then finally tossed oh. out. Lots of dirt obviously coming off of this. But it's interesting. There is a polish, not so much on this one or this one, but the one that's got the harshest treatment on the outside, it's the one that's still got the polish on the inside. The varnish, you can feel it on here, whereas these guys feel kind of rough and worn. This is gonna be an interesting project. Wow. Let's discuss where it really needs some help. I mean, this edge is obviously pretty gnarled up. Um, this whole thing is thirsty beyond belief, which all of these are relatively simple care when it comes to the broader thing. This is quite possibly the thirstiest piece of wood I've encountered. And that's why I'm gonna go ahead and get out my restoring oil. As it happens, I'm using Pledge. There could be other brands that are just great. This is just what happened to be in my store. I've actually heard that olive oil does a beautiful job, but as long as I have this, I'm gonna use it. Normally, I would do a whole lot of other things, you know, maybe some wood in there, you know, wood fill in there and everything, but it's just so thirsty. I can't put it off any further. This is the good side. Isn't that incredible, the difference? Can't wait to do the bad side. Did I mention this is heavy? <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Okay, but here's the one I'm most excited about. This is the sad, sad side. See, now I'm looking at just like, oh, little repairs I'll have to do. That's it. It looks so much healthier and promising. Whew, it's amazing what a little restorative oil can do to old furniture. Please, before you toss them, give it a shot. And then, you know what? Even if you turn out you didn't really like it when it was all said and done, you could still paint over it and then, you know, seal that saturation in there. Huh. Of all the wood pieces I've ever done, normally when I do the oil on it, you come back the next day and you'll start to see, ooh, look, it's a little dry, it needs a little bit more in this area or that. This one, by the time I had flipped it around to redo the other, you know, to do the other side, I could see that it needed it again. I mean, this thing was thirsty. Well, the top piece could definitely use some sanding, but seeing as I just went ahead and put this very dry, brittle, old piece of furniture through a saturation of oil, I'm not gonna mess with it. It's kind of a little too tender right now. So I'm gonna leave it alone and let it just soak up the oil and feel refreshed and start working on the base. Okay, so I've cleaned and oiled this piece of furniture because I actually do want it to be its most flexible when I try and repair it better than whatever this mess is. So we got the screws out. <sighs> Look at how long they were. These things are massive. Completely unnecessary. Because this is a crack. It's not even going, it's not the whole piece. Ugh. I want to make sure I get the glue inside. So I brought out an old paintbrush. Now to work a clamp on to tighten it. 
All right, so I've got the top of the table upside down, and I'm going to try and experiment with a wood filler that I've never used before to see how it works. Okay, following instructions on this, it's been about five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and just use a damp cloth to wipe excess off. Okay, well going through this whole thing, all of a sudden I came across this. Now this is the top part of one of the flaps, or leaves I should say. Using parchment paper to hold it up, then to hold that in place. Got a towel so it will protect the wood, and then a clamp. Now with this chewed up, gnarled up corner, I'm gonna sand it first. When I first clamped this, uh, the 24 hours after it, I was kinda like, ooh dear, there was still quite a big split there and I was a little bit afraid. But I was thankful that the wood glue said 28, 48, or 72 hours because lo and behold, a nice 42 hour, 48 hours later, I have got a nice solid bond here and they're matching almost perfectly. I'm going to put a little wood filler in and the chip here, but it looks so much better than having two Phillips screws just hanging out of it. Where there was some glue that seeped out, I'm definitely gonna have to you know clean up sand and stain here a little bit but honestly that's just glue gunk otherwise there was a crack that went from down here all the way up and yes some glue oozed out there but overall I am still very very thrilled with this I am gonna be working on sanding this now I did a lot of the wood filling on the back of it um, I want to use as little wood fill as possible on the front of it the part you see so I'm going to sand it first and see how bad or good things are. And now I am going to be using an electric sander. I've got a 220 grid in here. It's just that I started doing a lot of woodwork and finishing things. So it just became so much faster. Between each sanding, I've been wiping it down, and by sanding I mean each time I go through a different piece of sandpaper, wiping it down. I'm doing this so it's uh, less drudgery and less mess for the sander to get through, and also it gives me a better idea of how far I've come along. So I've taken it all the way down to an 80 grit as far as getting the whole thing across it, and I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing. It still has some marks and some marring in it, but you know, it's an old piece, that's what I want it to indicate and show. But now I'm gonna work my way back up the grit. So I had an 80, I did two of the 80s, and now I'm gonna go to a 120, and after that I'll do a 220 to finish it up before I go ahead and stain and do everything else it needs. Well, it's safe to say it's humid today. <laughs> But um, it's before the sun goes down, I wanna go ahead and put some stain on it and see how it goes. I'm actually just using um, the dark wood scratch cover from Old English simply because I had it in my garage. I have no preference in stains that I'm aware of just yet. If you know better, by all means, put a comment down there. Lint-free cloth, AKA trusty old t-shirt. I 
went and did the stain and it's had a chance to rest and this is what it looks like and it looks actually pretty great except for this area. Remember I used a wood filler that said you could sand it and you could stain it? Well clearly only one of those are true. It did sand well, it looks great that way, but it did not take the stain very well so I am going to have to hand paint this. Um, but before I get to the hand painting, I did want to give you one tip. Now, when you go online and look for tips on how to work with wood, whether it's restoring something old or building something new, you're going to find as many ways to do stuff with and it comes to the top coats as probably as there are crafters out there. And a lot of them give great advice. But one of my favorites is Ron Hazelton. Now, I'll do one of these things and I'll put links below. He isn't the one I follow exactly per se because he's got access to things necessarily that I don't have and I always try to work with what I have. Um, but he's always the one that if he says don't absolutely do something, then I go, okay, I'm gonna listen to that guy over everybody else. He's when I get confused. So just wanted to recommend if you are doing something with restoring or doing something new with wood, do check Ron Hazelton out. Quick favor, could you subscribe if you haven't already and oh, hit that bell. It'll give you reminders when I get new videos. Now technically, this is the underside, so I could just wax it and go. I mean, who's going to see it? But I'm going to know it's there. I'm going to actually be bothered by it. So I'm going to hand paint these to our stiffer waxes. These are my choices for this piece of furniture. This one, it doesn't smell too much. This one, that stinks a lot. This one's more cost effective. This one, it's not that bad of a price, but basically they're about the same price. So you can imagine how much more wax you're getting out of this one than you are this one. But oh my goodness, it's a stinky one. <laughs> so here's what the difference in the two of them when it came to putting wax on the piece of furniture. Now visually, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between these two. They both did a nice job. I'm gonna have to do a second coat on them because it's not as buffed out as I would like it to be. Smell-wise is remarkable. Whew, this one is so much better. No headache, no yuck smell. This feels like soft fabric practically. I mean, it, it's not that gooey, but it feels beautiful. This one still feels a little bit rough. I think what I'm gonna do is a combo of the two. I think I'm gonna use Stinky on parts that I don't want to wax anytime soon again, meaning right now the underneath side, maybe more difficult neat spots in the base of the table. There's areas where I can reach easily and are more likely to put food on the table and everything else. I'm gonna go with the less stinky one and not mind doing it again in another couple of years. Changing the plan, the smell. It just got to me. Here's the thing, full disclosure, my husband will be the first to tell you, I am very scent sensitive. So there's things that you know other people won't even notice or if they do notice, they don't bother them. But for me, yeah, I kept getting this ugh feeling. So I'm not gonna use that. What I'm gonna do is, this is slightly more expensive, but the smell is almost non-existent and very light. So I'm gonna use this, I will have to do twice the work. So instead of maybe doing two coats with the other one, I'm probably gonna have to do three, possibly four with this one. But I, you know, yeah, the smell, it was a really big deal for me. All right, we're starting to see it's dulling and I'm gonna go ahead and start to polish. Keep changing my towel up. Okay, now you can totally see over here, we've got the one that was polished earlier. 
This one is a bit cloudy. That one is my dog who just finished eating and wants to go play outside. With this final panel, I think I perfected my wax on move. Sorry, karate kid. Um, but what I did is I made sure I did, I did my circle motions all the way through it, but then I came back and I did, you know, north to south movement throughout the whole thing. And you can really start to see it. It's dull now. I need to go ahead and start buffing this off. This by far has been the driest piece of wood I have ever worked with. It has had three coats of wax and I still was able to give it uh, an oil finish polish and it just absorbed it right up. It's amazing. Um, but you know, we figure it's somewhere around 70-ish uh, years old and considering the condition I found it in, yeah, I don't even know if it's ever been treated nicely in all those 70 years for at least not the last 20 years. It's been probably sitting in a garage and just being neglected. So here's what it looks like when it's done. You know, the thing is, is I may be tired right now from putting in the effort, but it wasn't technically very hard to do this, to restore this piece of furniture. It's nothing you couldn't do too. So please, before you throw anything out, Give it a second shot.